All right, welcome to QTV Presents. I'm here with my friend from way, way back in the day. We used to eat craft dinner and play a whole bunch of NES games. John Painter, uh, local collector. Uh, John, obviously you can see from behind you, uh, we got a few games here, so. Just one or two. Just a few. Uh, how many games are in your collection right now? Uh, I think we've got 664 games in our collection right now, yes. Yeah, so. Out of a possible? Uh, 677 licensed. And that's all you do? You just North American license? Just titles. license, just license, yeah. We don't like the uh, the cartridges that aren't the gray ones. They look kind of funny and they kind of break it up. And most of the games suck pretty bad anyway. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. So what what got you into collecting? I know, I mean, that's the system I remember playing with you as a kid. Is that why you really wanted to start collecting or? Yeah, it's definitely a nostalgia trip, no doubt. Um, you know, uh, someone gave me a, a system with like 20 games and then we just kept picking up more and more and finding ones that we liked, and uh, it just kind of got out of hand and exploded from there, so. <laughs> so what's, what's it like being a collector for something like this? I mean, you know, everyone's got those memories of, of playing NES and stuff like that, but it's it's a little bit harder now, because a lot of things, I mean, I know I've gone back and played everything through emulation and stuff like that, so why why the hassle of having all of this stuff when you could go get like a ROM and you know play it on your computer? I'm a really physical media kind of guy. Um, even with like modern games, I never ever buy games uh, in digital. Uh, I, I like to have the physical copy in my hand. Always like, you know, Vita, PS4, PS3, anything like that. I never buy it digital. A lot of people really like it, but I don't know. I just really like the physical cartridge. Plus, there's something like, you know, sticking it back in the old toaster NES and playing the games and waiting for that light to stop blinking and jamming another cartridge on top. It's, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know it probably might be like picking a kid, like a favorite kid, but do you have like a few games that stand out as like your favorite games from from childhood or just the favorite games even you come back to and like, I really like this game? Few favorite games. Well, Contra, I think, is like my favorite game to like play through. I really like Contra. Uh, but other ones that I like to play a lot, like Battletoads, like I remember we used to play Battletoads all the time. Sure did, yeah. Uh, like Legend of Zelda, of course, and no one can f forget Mario Bros. 3. It's definitely like probably one of my favorite games of all time. I still play it now, I can do speed runs of it constantly, so I really like that game. So what game in your collection has the best story to go along with how, how you eventually managed to nag it? Well, I got this one right here on uh, eBay, I hit buy it now, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, probably the best story one would be uh, Flintstone Surprise Dinosaur Peak. Um, basically what happened is it came into a local game store and uh, it sat on the shelf for a couple days and uh, basically someone had traded it in. There's two different Flintstones games and it got miscalculated as the wrong game and uh, it was out on the counter for $9.99 so um, when I went in um, I know the owner and I saw it there and I worked out a little bit deal. I actually paid him more than that for it, but uh, he didn't ask for more, but I just felt that it deserved to, you know, have more paid for it. So uh, I'd say that's probably the best one by far. So what's the, the collecting scene like around the city? Because it's, you know, you often hear times like the smaller areas, it's it's a little bit harder to, to nab the titles you're after. And it's on the flip side, there's there's a lot more people. So especially in the Canadian market, kind of drives up prices a little bit. Like, how have you been finding, like, obviously I don't want to give away any of your big secrets because you're you're pretty close to the end here, but. Yeah, this recently it's been kind of bad. There's a ton of resellers. Um, it seems like everyone's in the, to like make money now and not so much to be collectors. I'm not saying there's not collectors. There's definitely some big collectors in the area that, you know, they love games. They're, you know, the stuff that they resell is just to, you know, fund their own collection. I understand that, but it seems like there's a lot of people that are just trying to Make, make a buck at it. Yeah. And it, it around here, it's really hard to find anything local. It's like everything's grabbed up before it even, you know, becomes available. So uh, I've been resorting to places like Nintendo Age. Um, a couple of my buddies, I have a buddy down in uh, Virginia who uh, uh, that I do a podcast with. And he's got, he's like a couple games short of the whole set, including unlicensed. And, uh, you know, he keeps an eye out for me. And I have another friend in California who keeps an eye out for me. So, you know, a pretty tight knit group. And, uh, just, you know, find some from all over the country and all over the states, so. So do you have a plan for, for what you'll do when you get the, the complete collection? Yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them out, put them in the front yard, douse them in gasoline, light it on fire, take a YouTube video, hopefully the hits play for it. Now, I, I don't know, we'll probably just, I don't know, start on something else, go to another collection. I'm gonna, I've been starting to collect boxes for them, so, uh, you know, I've been collecting some Game Boy games recently too. 
going for like maybe a complete in box set of Game Boy games or uh, uh, Super Nintendo. We'll see what happens next, but fair enough. Yeah. The wife wants to collect N64, so maybe we'll do that too. Okay. So the other reason I wanted to talk to you is I know you're doing an event uh, coming up very soon. I am. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Well, we're raising money for By the While, and by doing that, I'll be playing NES games for 24 hours straight. Um, it's going to be hosted at the last game store on uh, Lacewood Drive in Halifax. And um, yeah, so basically I'll be playing through that. You can donate money, uh, buy tickets are $3 each, two for five type deal. Uh, and then so on, like up the chain, it gets cheaper and cheaper. Um, first prize is going to be for a brand new Wii and a Wii U. And we're also doing an optional draw. And in that optional draw, you can win a Nintendo, a Super Nintendo, a Nintendo 64, a GameCube, a Wii, a Wii U, and a Game Boy. And they're all in the original boxes with a couple of Mario games. So. so you're giving away your table scraps. Giving away the scraps, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I've actually seen it. Everything looks really, really awesome. What uh, what kind of brought that about? Just um, You know, we, uh, we had talked about doing a marathon for a while. And uh, we get to the point now where we have... You know a big majority of the games so we just thought we'd go through and play a bunch of them obviously i don't have all the games so uh we won't be playing all of them but none of them will be emulated they'll be ran off a console all real cartridges so it'd be kind of fun and obviously they're not complete playthroughs i don't No, yeah yeah if, <laughs> if i could beat these games in a minute and a half man i'm good but uh no they'll be about like i said they're gonna be about uh right around a minute to a minute and a half some games are gonna do speed runs i'll do speed run a mario maybe a speed run a contra or something like that but um most of them are gonna be cut like to a minute minute and a half Awesome. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to show us your collection. And, uh, for sure. Yeah, look forward to playing some of them. Definitely. <laughs>